For years, people have wondered what was in this box. The human race finds out today. What's even in this thing? Hi, I'm Mason, and this is Cinema Rewind. We take a look at movies five years back and beyond. Today we're talking about the 1999 movie, The Mummy, directed by Stephen Summers, starring Brendan Fraser, Rachel Wise, John Hanna, and Arnold Vosloo as The Mummy. Based off the classic monster movie from the 1930s, this film is a blockbuster to end all blockbusters. Gone but not forgotten. <laughs> I'll remember you, blockbuster. The plot. Imhotep is in love with one of Pharaoh's side chicks, Anxunamen. They can't be together, obviously, because Rar, mean pharaoh. Girlfriend kills herself so that Emotep can resurrect her later. He tries, but gets caught by pharaoh's dudes, and they kill him and his cronies by mummifying them alive. A group of people are set to protect his burial place to keep him from coming back, because if he does, it'll lead to biblical, biblical plagues. plagues. Flash forward to the roaring 20s. American Rick O'Connell leads troops to find the treasure of Hominoptera. Where that mummy is at? O'Connell's pal Benny leaves him high and dry in the middle of the battle. Coward. The guards protect the site like they're supposed to. They leave O'Connell out in the desert to just die. Flash forward another three years. Smart girl Evie the librarian does this bookshelf domino thing. It's time for tangents. There are probably dozens upon dozens of priceless scripts in this Cairo library, and she haphazardly just knocks them all over all willy-nilly. I would be so mad, and her boss is just super chill about the whole thing. This has been Tangents. Tune in next time when Mason does the cinnamon tablespoon challenge thing way after the fad has already ended. Evie's brother Jonathan finds a box with a map. They find out later that he didn't find it, he stole it from O'Connell. Not a good move. They find O'Connell in prison, and he's about to be hanged. They negotiate with the warden to have him released for 25% of the treasure. They board a ship and meet some Americans, who are also after the treasure with good old Benny. They start a bet to see who can get to the tomb first. The guards who protect the tomb invade the boat. The boat burns down, leading to this priceless scene. Hey! O'Connell! It looks to me like I've got all the horses! Hey, Benny! Looks to me like you're on the wrong side of the river! <laughs> they get to the tomb and find some stuff, like important stuff for Emotep to resurrect his dead girlfriend, and they also find Emotep. They, um, accidentally resurrect him. Emotep starts stealing body parts from other people to reconstitute himself. And then he decides that Evie will make a great human sacrifice for his girlfriend to bring her back. He steals Evie and O'Connell and company have to defeat him and his undead cronies while dealing with his plagues. There's a lot going on. The good stuff. This is one of the last great blockbusters. Great characters, an interesting story, and groundbreaking special effects. I love Jonathan and Benny as comic relief. Jonathan is just the right amount of dumb to be enjoyable, but also smart enough to not be dead weight in the story. And Benny, love to hate him. Brendan Fraser is great in this, and he has good chemistry with Rachel Wise. This movie has an exciting quality like an Indiana Jones movie, but I'll save talking about that more in The Pitfalls. Yeah, they kind of ripped off Indiana Jones. I'm sorry, but it's true. There's some obvious plot holes here and there, and some of the effects just don't really hold up anymore. But I give it a pass, because the tech was only about a decade old at that point. Especially the sand effects. You can tell between real and fake sand in this picture. In conclusion, Universal Studios has been trying to make money off all of the monster movies that they own the rights to. For years, they succeeded with this movie, but when they tried with others, they failed hard. The success of this movie is only due to it riding on the shoulders of other classics, but in the end, making it just as enjoyable as its predecessors. I'm Mason, I like movies, and I'll see you next time on 